Do you know food is a bearer of memories? No matter how busy or preoccupied you are, there will be a kind of food that has the power to stop you in your tracks and take you right back to your childhood. This is especially true in Macau, whose cuisine is nothing less than an edible chronicle of the vicissitudes of history. Here in the bustling kitchens, cooks and chefs dedicate themselves to creating classic dishes. To many citizens, these dishes represent the taste of home. Time zones, it seems, exist even in the same city. It's 5 a.m. While the city soundly sleeps, the fishermen have already weighed anchor. If you want to catch more, you must work harder. Stay out there for a longer time, and you'll catch more fish. 30-year-old Quan Ho In has been going to sea with his father and grandfather for 16 years. Even though they're all experienced fishermen, they're not sure about their catch today. As the fishing boats head for offshore pastures, Hak Sa, one of Macau's oldest Hakka villages, wakes to the sound of birds and the fragrance of flowers. Away from the urban hustle and bustle. With enough water and fertilizers, they can be harvested in a month. A few hundred meters away on a hillside, Ng Kun Chong is looking for a plant. Evodia lepta is a common ingredient in the herbal tea of Guangdong. But today, Ng Kun Chong is going to use it to make a traditional dish. Although modern utensils have replaced traditional mortise, the refreshingly bitter citrus aroma of an Evodia lepta remains the same. The procedure of mixing the juice with glutinous rice flour is a fun game for Ng Kun Chong's granddaughter. Okay, no need to press it. Do we need oil? No. Fresh banana leaves are also used as containers for another Hakka dessert. A classic formula comprising crushed peanuts, coconut shreds, and sugar. Wow, it's so tiny. You made it too small. This one is yours. So it's not just about eating. Two sweet treats originally made only on special occasions are now ready to serve. I made the one you are eating. Yeah, you made it. This is one of the many legacies of the Hakka people found in today's Macau. While Ng Kun Chung's family are still enjoying their breakfast, the Kwans have reached the Wanshan fishery, a place with abundant marine resources. A vessel like this is called a prawn boat by locals. The county levers on both sides can cover a width of 40 meters and drag 18 nets simultaneously. They are used exclusively for catching shrimps and crabs. Working on the sea is not as easy as people think. Understanding the currents and knowing how to trawl requires training. Nowadays, it is rare to see young people like Quan Ho in working as fishermen. Fishing used to be a pillar of Macau's economy with more than 2,000 fishing boats in the 1950s. Now, the total number of fishing boats is less than 100.
the fresh catches will be delivered to seafood markets early the next morning. We call these the long-necked mantis shrimp. They taste fresh and sweet. They are the most delicious species. These are short claws. That's what we call them. They taste a bit salty. Fish in brackish water are fresher and tastier. And the crabs are not very salty. They tend to be milder in taste. At present, about 40% of products in Macau's seafood markets come from local fishing boats. In Macau, the cooking methods used for seafood vary greatly. The mud crab common in the Pearl River estuary is an ingredient familiar to Macau chefs. This is a water crab. Press it and it goes in. This is a roe crab. This one doesn't have much roe. This meaty one is a virgin crab. Shortly after a mud crab molds, its meat hasn't taken shape and its body is full of juice. Locals call a mud crab in this stage of growth a water crab. A virgin crab has just reached its adulthood and is rich in both roe and meat. Congee cooked for four hours will become yet more delectable with a dash of crab juice. The luxurious crab congee with water crab, roe crab and virgin crab in one part integrates all flavors of the mud crab in every stage of life. There's a Cantonese style of cooking that really brings out the taste of virgin crabs. Garlic laid at the bottom and fine salt that drives and hardens into a crust on top help produce a firmer meat texture than simply steaming. Passion, igniting, resilient, intensify its aroma and appeal. The silver pomfret from the South China Sea is given a peculiar smoky aroma by tea leaves, raw rice and walnut pith. The ingredients used to give the fish its signature smokiness are sourced from all over the world. A truly inclusive dish. Seafood can also be used together with dried tangerine peel to give duck an extra flavorful tag. After six hours of cooking, the aroma of tangerine, the freshness of abalone, and the richness of duck meats are blended to create a true delicacy. The making of seafood in Hexa village still follows traditional practices. Repeated hard blows release neoxin in the fish fibers to produce gelatin. Not far away in Shundi, Guangdong province, dace cakes were made in the same way 150 years ago. Lok Van Tak is the convener of a village banquet. He is very familiar with Cantonese cuisines. Add pan-fried sliced scallion and boiling oil, and then soy sauce. Tonight is the birthday party of Lok Van Tak and one of his friends. Nearly 100 guests are invited. Together, they enjoy the elaborately prepared delicacies and celebrate the occasion. Time like a mirror can always reflect the most youthful memories on a hardship enduring face. In Macau, you could always see the origin of the city. through a dining table. In the old streets, it is a bowl of tong sui or sweet soup that brings back childhood memories for many. The crisp and sweet water chestnut can be transformed into a classic sweet soup by Lu Lam Lim. 
And in this process, one thing is crucial. After stirring the smashed water chestnut, you need to put water, and the quality of water is very important. Since the 1960s, Macau's water supply system has been connected to Zhuhai in Guangdong. Several reservoirs built along the Xijiang River bring about 270,000 tons of clean water every day to Macau, which is short of fresh water resources. The incoming water supports the functioning of the city and the people's daily lives, not least the catering sector. Lu Lam Lim's shop has been there for half a century. No matter how the ingredients change, water is always fundamental to creating a smooth and sweet soup. Before monosodium glutamate came along, stock was the most powerful flavor weapon in the cook's war on blindness. When the water-soluble protein of the meat is dissolved in water, stock is produced to impart flavor to other ingredients. Simple ingredients like bok choy from Jiangmen in Guangdong can be transformed by the power of stock into something utterly delicious. Turnip cake, plain congee, and deep fried dough sticks are popular with the guests. Our rice congee has the flavor of rice and soybean as well. The practice of adding tofu skin to congee was introduced by Leong Hang Yu's father, who was also Senkei's founder. The protein of soybean dissolves in the congee, enhancing its taste and fragrance. By serving congee and several kinds of dim sum, the restaurant has been running for over a century. Do you know food is a bearer of memories? After all these years, our customers have got accustomed to the taste. Then they got married, had kids, and brought their children here to eat. When their kids grew up, their grandchildren were brought here. For generations, the taste has remained the same. Macau's history is also revealed by the locals' everyday life. Patain Market next to a wharf is where Sun Quan Sing, a retired Cantonese chef, visits every day. As I have said, every trade has its tricks. No exception. Every Cantonese chef has his or her own secret recipe. Even with something as ordinary as soy sauce, their versatility is endless. 100 Cantonese chefs would somehow manage to use it in 100 different ways. Cantonese accounts for 80% of Macau's population, most of whose ancestors migrated from various parts of Guangdong. The composition of the population means that the foundation of Macau cuisine is Cantonese cuisine. Sun Quan Singh has his own knack for turning waste food into treasure. But taking out the inner membrane of a fish bladder requires skill and patience. After being marinated, it becomes a delightfully appetizing ingredient. Extracting bones from a duck's flipper is even more challenging than processing fish bladders. Only with precision and control can the skin be kept complete. After being simmered for 30 minutes, the skin becomes perfectly crunchy. Then it will be stir-fried for 20 seconds with fish bladder and chicken liver and make a dish rarely seen in restaurants since Sun Quan Singh's retirement. It doesn't stick to the meat, see? I told you. Traditional ingredients can be cooked in a new way. I prefer to insist on my own idea and principle. Sun Quan Singh has long been devoted to traditional Cantonese cuisines. Spiny head croaker is no longer than a palm. 
so it poses considerable challenges to the cook's cutting and slicing skills. After taking the succulent part off, the flake has to be sliced again to increase its width. Then sausage and crab meat are curled in to enrich its flavor. The spiny head croaker should be cooked on a well-controlled fire. After frying for 50 seconds, they are stir-fried for eight seconds before being dished out. The result is tender, savory fish rolls that are welcomed by the city's younger generations. Cantonese cuisine specialists are known for medicosity and patience. These qualities are especially to be seen in Guangdong's Shunde cuisine, which is also taken root in Macau. It is particularly difficult to prepare a quality dish with ordinary ingredients. Grass carp, one of the four major agriculture fishes in China, is also one of the most common ingredients in Shunde. The key to cooking grass carp is getting rid of the fishy smell. For this purpose, the carp is fried first to seal in the fresh flavor. Once that's done, it's ready to be steamed with scallion and ginger. In Shunda, minced fish soup is a very traditional dish. For a long time, nearby Macau was the place Shunde's chefs flocked to to make a name for themselves. As a result, Shunde cuisine became known to more and more people. For the fish soup, Che Hoi Sam uses an entire dace, while grass carp bones are used for the stock. Then in with some grass carp floss, and the fresh, thick soup is ready. Almost ready. One last essential ingredient is still missing. The essence of minced fish soup is the olive kernel, a much-loved ingredient by Shundi people. The best olive kernels in China come from Zhengcheng in Guangzhou. Every year after the mid-autumn festival comes the black olive harvest season. Don't sit there. You'll get hit on the head. Sishan black olive has been cultivated here for more than 400 years. In Dengshan village, every family has a tree climbing master. They spend at least 10 hours a day on the trees during the two month picking season. Is the water hot? Not yet. Wait for a while. To process the black olive, the water temperature should be kept up around 70 degrees Celsius. After stirring and soaking for five minutes, the olives are softened, making it easier to remove the cores. Circle the thread back. Hold it with your hands. Pull and put the core in there. By twisting and pulling a cotton thread tied to a basket, the villagers can open an olive and remove the cores. This craft has been passed down through the generations in Dengshan village. The rooftops of many houses in the village are used to dry the cores and flesh of olives. After about four days, they open the cores to take out the kernels. As they do, the air becomes thick with a delightful piney, nutty aroma. The olive kernel bestows another fragrance on the soup. My teacher always told me that we shouldn't be constrained by traditional methods, nor should we forget them when exploring new ways. It tastes good. Try the flesh first. 
black olive after being soaked in hot water, has a texture similar to sweet potato. White sugar or soy sauce with grated ginger will make it even more seductive. The flesh of the olives also have their use. Pressed and cured for weeks with fine salt. They are transformed into a commonly used ingredient in Cantonese cuisine. Following in the steps of the Cantonese chefs, these pickled olives have also made their way to Macau. We apply Cantonese cooking techniques to food ingredients from other places. Our traditional cooking methods are our roots. Homan Sui has modified the cooking process of a steamed fish ingredient unique to Cantonese cuisine. While in the traditional formula, olive flesh and fermented black soybeans are simply fried together in oil. Homan Sui adds a touch of his own pickled pepper and hot chili. The fish to be steamed with olive flesh are carefully selected. We prefer fish with more fat because the olive flesh will absorb it and become tastier. Salmon rich in oil can stimulate the flavor of olive and soybean sauce. Coupled with fig and lotus leaves, the dish acquires a refreshing and sweet aroma. Based on traditional Cantonese cuisine, Homan Sui has created a unique style of cooking by combining conventional flavors and local ingredients. For example, gelatin-rich prawns caught by Macau fishermen can be mixed with minced pork, water chestnuts, olive kernels, and pickled olive. Pig's oil can both maintain the shape of a dish and add to its fragrance. This dish is inspired by the quay meat roll and traditional sweet and sour pork. Macau's unique cuisine has thus been developed by the younger generations innovating on the basis of inherited tradition. In Taipa, Macau, there is a century-old shrimp paste shop for many Cantonese chefs. Its owner, 91-year-old Paolo, is nothing less than a culinary legend. His handmade shrimp paste is unparalleled and indispensable. A machine could fill 1,000 bottles in the time it takes me to fill a 100 by hand. Paolo has always followed traditional methods by mixing new shrimp paste with the batch produced six months earlier and churning repeatedly to blend an aromatic nostalgic taste is produced. Streaky pork with shrimp paste is a home-cooked favorite for many. The thickness of the paste and the refreshing zing of the cooking wine lend the pork a special new twist. Now, the traditional shrimp paste has been introduced to Beijing by an established Cantonese chef. These conks might look big but 800 grams will yield just 200 grams of meat. 
Each slice is no thicker than two millimeters. After being embraced in clear chicken soup, it's ready for the dressing. Hot oil and ginger juice tame the strong smell of the paste, and meanwhile creating a pleasant appetizing aroma. So it is that in this new era, the Macau taste is making an impact on dining tables thousands of miles away. The cooking methods have been passed down from over a century ago. This is no secret recipe. Everyone knows about it. If you don't mind taking the time, you can do it too. When I graduated from primary school, World War Ill broke out. All middle schools and universities were suspended. By the time the war was over, I was like 15 years old. How was I supposed to get into a middle school at that age? Reminiscing about the past, Paolo is still as energetic as he ever was. Regardless of his nine decades, he's still in his prime. By 6 a.m., Macau's meat markets are already buzzing. Truckloads of fresh pork has come through customs from the Chinese mainland. He wants fresh meat. Overnight meat cannot do. We have to chop the meat apart and send it to him as quickly as we can. He wants the front shoulder blade to be tender and smooth, and no hind legs. I have been delivering for him for 16 years. As usual, Lo Kam Pui saves his best meat for a regular customer. This simple backstreet shop, so anonymous that it even lacks a signboard, is a gastronomic mecca in the eyes of many Macanese. I think I've been holding knives here longer than my father. Mat Lam, who started working with his father when he was 14, has been in the shop for more than 50 years. The habit of cooking char siu or roasted pork with the front shoulder blade, which is rich in intermuscular fat, has never changed. There are people thinking of creating a new way, but we never think that way. We stick to the old way and do it well. Marinated pork with ingredients such as sugar, salt, liquor, sesame paste, and soy sauce is a recipe known throughout the industry. But the food in this little shop has a magic touch that makes diners queue up for more than an hour under the scorching sun. After I tasted the food here for the first time with my parents, I couldn't get it off my mind. Now we have been eating it for three decades. Macau is a small place. After all these years, we have some customers whose entire family from old men to children are regular visitors. Chak Siu, one of Macau's most popular delicacies, has taken deep roots in the local diet. Whether spit roasted or oven roasted, the essence of roasting is heating meat over fire. But heat and timing is everything, something that experienced cooks know all about. If you can't control the heat properly, you can't roast well. When the meat is almost ready, heat needs to go up to crisp up the skin. Once that's done, the meat comes out and is dressed with maltos. All the elements for exquisitely preparing salty sweet char siu are now in place. Many people think there's a strict recipe to follow, but in fact there isn't. The only recipe is in our minds.
At 11.30 a.m., the shop opens right on time, and the couple are soon up to their elbows in work. Van Kay. They only sell smoked trotters, char siu, and soy sauce chicken. The three kinds of food sold separately or in combination, plus four woks of rice, are all there is on the menu. It takes us only three hours to sell all the food, but there's lots of preparation to be done beforehand. The flat of the cleaver serves a dual purpose. It sets the pace for Mac Lam's busy lunchtime service and signals to hungry customers that he's open for business. How much do you still need? Rice with char siu. Please wait a second. A tough existence? The expression on the owner's wife's face tells you everything you need to know. Fan is actually my father's name. Not my wife's name, as many might have supposed. Three char show and trotters combos? Okay. Give this to her first. Half fat, half lean. Amid the clutching of the knife, the three hours always fly by. We have been partners for so long that we know exactly what each other wants. If marriage is a predestined relationship, but your wife plays mahjong every day, it would be a bad destination. Isn't that what people say about it? <laughs> Just speak out, don't ask me. We call it bad luck. But if your wife is better than that, then you will live a good life. That's it. In the shop, there are many ancient gadgets. This is Maklam's collection. Standing in silence, each piece represents a period of time. History determines how you start your life. There would be no life if there was no history. I'm over 50 years old, and I'm about to become part of history. In Macau, history is not a synonym for cliché. Rather, it is the foundation of inheritance. These are mini chewy cookies. These are walnut sweet cakes. These are abalone sweet cakes. It tastes good as well. But there is no abalone in it. It takes the shape of an abalone and is called abalone sweet cake. There are many layers inside that makes it taste crispy. Pastry is one of the Ku's most famous specialties. This is a bakery with a history of 120 years. Though they still adhere to the old handmade tradition, the current owner of the shop bears a youthful face. When I was about to go to university, I was thinking about being an engineer or doctor. But one day my aunt said to me that if I didn't inherit the shop, no one else would. All of a sudden, I saw another career path for myself. At last, I decided to come back and carry on the traditional crafts. Ku is the only one here that is able to make the oldest kind of cake. The key technique in making this cake is kneading the dough. It should be kneaded for no more than five minutes, so it won't stiffen. This requires strength and experience. When I first started to work here, I was thinking, why did I have to do this? This is an outmoded shop, and there is no place to install an air conditioner. The temperature can go high to 40 degrees Celsius in summer. It is not an easy job, but after some time I got used to it. I'm sticking to it so that I can carry on the traditional crafts. Historically, light cake was a snack Macau fishermen always had when they went to sea. It might look plain, but that doesn't mean it's easy to make. Many customers say that the light cakes made by me are more delicious than others. It's a motivation for me. Their praise is a recognition. 
I made it. Building on past practices, the pastry industry in Macau is being modernized. Koike producing 300,000 almond cakes each day, and with over 300 pastry products developed, accounts for 70% of the market share in Macau and reflects the development of the city. In fast-moving Macau, there are always people adjusting their pace to catch up with the city's new rhythms. Treating each other with all sincerity, living in the moment, feeling content, drinking with bosom friends, the highest pursuit in life. I'm Fatty Hap. Just like every superhero has his superpower, Chung Ying Hap has his secret weapon. The loaf is about to be filled with spicy curry beef. Never following the beaten track, Chung Ying Hap calls his self-invented cuisine ingenious. I wonder why Western bread appears in a Chinese cuisine restaurant. <laughs> I used to learn Portuguese cuisine. I started off as a chef of Portuguese cuisine. When learning Western cooking, there was Western curry and Macanese curry. He started off making Portuguese cuisine in 1981 and Cantonese cuisine in 1985. He has kept updating his menu since he opened his own restaurant 30 years ago. If they want something special, they know the big boss can make it for them. The wine shrimp is ready to be eaten. Why are you called Fatty Hap? Aren't I fat? Yes, but what about Hap? It's from Hap in Cantonese, as in my name, Chung Ying Hap. Chung Ying Hap. Chung Ying Hap. Hence Fatty Hap, I see. Hence Fatty Hap. A large number of tourists come to Macau after its return to China. Chung Ying Hap and his ingenious cuisine quickly became popular with tourists. There's not much room for innovation with Portuguese cuisine. Cantonese cuisine has more possibilities. So I combine the two. Chung Ying Hap prepares to cook a famous Cantonese dish, wax gourd soup. Naturally, he uses his secret weapon to put cabbage into the wax squad. The combination of dried shrimp ribs and dried oysters comes from years of experience in blending flavors. I named this dish Boohoo because it has baby Chinese cabbage, which gets down well with both children and the elder. Boohoo is to mimic the sound of a baby crying. I'm very happy today. So the dish I made today should be more delicious. When customers see you are happy, they will be happy too. With Chan Ying Hap, the time spent at a dinner table is never boring. We never write those things down. They're like something you can't forget or tell others. They are special. Chan Wai Leong is talking about the roasting techniques he inherited from his family. Roasted meat or siu mei in Cantonese is another aspect of Macau heritage. Thanks to modern machinery, this factory can provide siu mei throughout the year. On New Year or festivals, it can produce three tons of siu mei per day, serving 70% of restaurants in Macau. The roast duck craft that Chan Wai Leong has inherited is a distinguished one. 
The spice passed down from his family and quality black pepper into great Western and Chinese flavors, producing a novel mouthfeel. This technique can be traced back to my great-grandfather, who was a street vendor in Xinhui, Guangdong. My grandfather peddled in the streets of Macau. They lived on it. Unlike some roasted products that use soy sauce to enhance their color, the color of roasted duck comes entirely from the Maillard reaction between sugared skin and fire. Roasted duck with black pepper has a reddish color and a light spicy aroma. They will be delivered within 10 minutes to ensure the duck remains crisp skinned and plump with delicious juices. Some regular customers can tell the difference in the amount of condiments. Sometimes there is more salt, sometimes more sugar. They will tell me. It is difficult to cater to all tastes, but in Macau, that doesn't seem to be much of an issue. Thanks to the mobility of people, foods from all over Hina have met and integrated in Macau. Better lie down than sitting. Instead of being elbowed out in Macau, dumplings from northern China gained a foothold. The popularity began 15 years ago, thanks to mainland immigrants. Sweet and sour spare ribs. Have a try. Our ribs are bigger. What do you think, Wa? My hometown is in Shanghai. My father hoped to bring to Macau our hometown's cuisine and culture. Shanghai cuisine features strong oil and sauce. Since 2006, the hotel has never stopped promoting the flavor of Shanghai. Smoked egg with tea leaf is a classic Shanghai dish. Normally, people don't spend that much time making such dishes, so we work to provide authentic Shanghai food to Macau people so they can get to know more about Shanghai. The yolk of the smoked egg is only the beginning of a feast. Braised pork leg, the grand finale dish in a Shanghai New Year's Eve family dinner, is another representative of strong oil and source creation. When seasoning, only dark soy sauce is used so as to produce a dark color. As a final step, the mixture of colored rich stock, cornstarch, and water is poured onto the dish. This is the palatable braised pork leg. Whatever the weather, Tam Kwok Fung can be found waiting at the entrance of the hotel storeroom for a new batch of ingredients. In the 15 years he's been in Macau, this has been his unbreakable custom. I think as a Chinese cuisine cook, the most important thing is to preserve and pass on some traditional tastes in Cantonese or Chinese cuisine. In Tam Kwok Fung's opinion, it is also a kind of inheritance to continue the tradition of Cantonese cuisine based on Chinese and foreign ingredients, and even to recreate the ancient Cantonese cuisine with modern combinations. In the attempt to make a classic dish, he takes out an accidentally found ingredient. In Macau, ingredients are easy to get. Its culture is inclusive, and its people welcome different cuisines. 
This is a dried skin of speckled hind. Its value is beyond measure because of its rareness. At the age of 17, Tam Kwok Fung was able to prepare dried food for a 100 table banquet and knew the technique for soaking. You have to stay cool and wait for it. Soaking it with hot water and cold water alternatively can help preserve the colloid better. Starting from the skin, Tam Kwok Fung will prepare an elaborate dish. Drawing inspiration from a lost dish, Kun Lun Abalone, Tam Kwok Fung gives full play to the role of stock in imparting flavor. Stock made with soaked dried abalone induces the fresh flavor from the fish skin. Moreover, Tam Kwok Fung incorporates a wide range of ingredients, such as deer sinew, shaddock peel, and Japanese kelp, showcasing his ingenuity and innovation. If you need to define gourmet food, Tam Kwok Fung's answer is the pursuit of perfection. The pursuit of taste is all that counts, not technique for its own sake. To recreate this traditional dish represents the inheritance of traditional cooking techniques. Every day in Macau's culinary world, there are new creations taking place and history being made. Born in Macau, they've grown up keeping a watchful eye on the historical rings of this petite city. A day will come when the once bustling millennial waterways fall silent or the century-old streets that remain lively will, by a dining table, stir a myriad of thoughts. A seed of homesickness will be sown, later to sprout into a grand tree providing shade, its very trunk etched with the resilience of history, brimming with tender sentiments for the dazzling future ahead.